Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim we begin with Allah's blessed name we praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you as we greet you from the city of Islamabad in Pakistan in blessed Ramadan with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and with Ramadan Kareem. Uh, we are now in the 19th day of the month of Ramadan so there is little time left before we enter the last one third. Um, and uh, I want to first of all begin uh, these few sessions I will record today uh, with a statement on the virus which is long overdue uh, and that is that uh, I have consistently maintained that this COVID-19 virus or whatever other names they call uh, the virus which is now universal in its embrace of the world uh, I have always consistently maintained that this has not come from nature and that this has come from a, from a laboratory. It has been manufactured in a laboratory and therefore it constitutes biological war. Let us give my reasoning why I have come to this conclusion. Uh, the Quran is uh, our source of knowledge. Uh, we who follow Nabi Muhammad Islam, but I've come to Pakistan to find that while there's one part of Pakistan whose heart is still attached to the Quran and longs for the knowledge of the Quran, there is another part of Pakistan which says, we don't care two peanuts for the Quran. So I've not come to that part of Pakistan. I've come to this part of Pakistan whose hearts are still attached to the Quran. The Quran has absolute truth in it. For us, it is al haqqul yaqeen. The Quran is divinely protected. That's what Allah says. And Allah has commanded us in the Quran, بَعْدَوْزِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ He says, وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا Wage a mighty jihad against the forces of evil the forces of falsehood, the rivals to the truth in the world, the oppressors, wage a mighty jihad against them using the Quran as your weapon. And so we turn to the Quran to respond, first of all, to the virus. And when we do that, Allah tells us in the Quran that he has created this universe this material universe, bilhaq, and that is the truth is embedded in Allah's creation. If truth is embedded in Allah's creation and a virus comes from nature, then that virus will not envelop the whole world. That will be an unjust order, not a moral order. A virus which comes from nature, which embraces all of mankind, could not come for a uni from a universe which is created with truth and with truth embedded in it. And so we therefore conclude, as since this virus has embraced all of mankind, anywhere you go in the world today, governments are now following the script sent by the World Health Organization. And therefore, wherever governments control people, anywhere in the world today, the virus is present. And they are very eager in counting the numbers of people who have been infected by the virus. They're not too particular about how accurate their, their, their diagnosis is. It could be a common cold, but no, this is virus. And they're not too particular really on counting how many people actually die from the virus. Someone could die from a heart attack. No, no, it's a virus. This kind of slipshod calculating indicates to us 
that those who are behind this virus, it's not from nature, it's from a, from a laboratory. And they are, in fact, in, uh, pursuing biological warfare. This could not have come from nature. This is my first point, that it is in conflict with our book, the truth which comes from our book, that a virus could embrace all of mankind at the same time. That's not possible from the truth which has come from the Quran. Since the virus has come from a laboratory, it's manufactured, it constitutes, as I said, biological warfare. I have given the analysis many, many times so far in this last one year or so that we've been living with the virus, that we can recognize the end game that the end game is located in the Holy Land. And so this virus has Zionist roots in it. So the end game is the Holy Land. And therefore, we anticipate. And when we speak and give our views, of course, only Allah can confirm that we are correct. But that does not mean that we should not offer an opinion. Our opinion, which is... Uh, uh, subject to the caveat that only Allah knows uh, whether it is true or not, our opinion is that this, universe, this virus is going to continue for several years. It's not going to stop now. This phenomenon has never existed in human history. It's the first time it's taking place. And therefore that should alert our medical scholars <laughs> that you should not analyze this subject purely from a viewpoint of medical knowledge. What is the end product? What is the end game? Our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, has prophesied about the end times of Akhir zaman He said that the Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague. That's the old term, plague. The new term is epidemic and uh, virus. <coughs> So he prophesied that the Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague. My understanding is it does not apply to the entire Arab world. My understanding is this applies in particular to Arabs resident in the Holy Land and around the Holy Land because that's the battleground. And so I anticipate that they will keep this virus turning, turning and turning and turning around the world, coming and going, coming and going, until eventually, I don't know how long from now, until eventually a virus will be released in the Holy Land, in Israel, which will be the most dangerous, dangerous virus of all, manufactured in their laboratory. And this is the one which will wipe out the Arabs. Well then, if it's wiping out the Arabs, well, what about the Jews? We can't have a virus that will also wipe out the Jews. So in other words, we, we are looking to a, to a virus that is manufactured that has DNA specifications that will target only Arabs and not target uh, Jews. I'm not engaged in any anti-Semitic uh, diatribe. If you're listening to me and you get, you're grinding your teeth with frustration. Oh, no, no. I'm merely speaking what I view to be factual, that this is what's going to happen. And uh, when the Arabs in the Holy Land and around the Holy Land are wiped out, then the Israelis, the Zionists can say, well, don't blame us. This virus has been here all along. Blame the virus, don't blame us. This virus is from nature. Well, I'm telling you from now, you should not be brainwashed. It's time for you to open your eyes and look and see. And what I'm offering to you is I believe, I believe, I believe it is credible. Now then, I have, <laughs> I have a surprise. I have a surprise for <laughs> our governments who are towing the line. Everything that comes from the World Health Organization, they are falling to the letter. So social distancing, 
face mask, lockdowns, all of this, close the masjid, all of this, everything that comes from the World Health Organization. It looks like a, it looks like a circus to me. But they have a lovely word in the Urdu language. Since I'm in Pakistan, I can use some Urdu terminology. Uh, in Pakistan, they call it a tamasha. <laughs> yes, they're playing games with us. What has our prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, about the virus? That is their way. Now, will the government of Pakistan listen for a moment? What is our way? Are you capable of thinking? I'm just inviting you to think if you have an iota of fidelity to the truth. And the truth comes from the Quran. And the truth comes from he who was sent to teach the Quran. So how would Nabi Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon him, how would he respond if he was here today in Islamabad? I hope you'll not be offended by my question because you proclaim your love for the Prophet. Yes, you proclaim it. So if he were here in Islamabad, how would he respond to the virus? That's the question. And if I raise my voice, it's because of frustration. Because our people no longer think. And I'm so conscious of the fact that Dr. Muhammad Iqbal declared, he said, this Ummah stopped thinking 500 years ago. Yes, what a pathetic state. When, when, when will you learn to think instead of slavishly following the World Health Organization? This is what our Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, if you are in a location where the virus is struck, don't leave. And if you are outside, don't enter. Indicating that he was conscious of the fact that the virus can be contagious, meaning it can spread from one person to another. I don't know whether this knowledge was in the world at that time. And therefore, a virus can lead to an epidemic or plague. But what he said amounted to quarantine. So yes, our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, would impose a quarantine. But he would impose the quarantine only when there is adequate evidence that a plague or an epidemic is in place. One sparrow doesn't make a summer. A lovely English expression. So one person falling ill with a virus doesn't make an epidemic which requires quarantine. You have to have the evidence and the evidence must not be cooked in a kitchen by people who have lost all contact with truth. The evidence must be accurate before our Prophet ﷺ would recognize that there is an epidemic in a place. What we have with us today is so many cooks cooking a false diet in a kitchen, telling us that the epidemic is here and everywhere. And we, like cattle and like sheep, we follow what they say. Of course, the media, the newspapers, the radio, the television, like, like sheep and cattle, just continue part and parcel of the brainwashing. That's their status. That's why I don't want to be on television. Not at all. Take it away from me. I have no interest in that and radio and newspapers. I don't want to be a part of that brainwashing machinery that Trump called fake news. He said one more thing. He said, if you are in a place where the virus has struck and you don't leave, you remain, 
and you die, you go to heaven. No government can say that. The World Health Organization is miles and miles and miles away from even a sifting of making a statement like that. No scholar, no university can say that. Only a prophet of the one God can speak like that. That if you die from the virus by staying, not running, you would be shaheed, you would be a martyr, you would enter into heaven. But did he say the human shut down the market? Would Nabi Muhammad والسلام, if he's in Islamabad today and there's a virus, there's an epidemic and he says, don't leave, stay. Would he shut down the market? Do you have any evidence? Would he say you can't go to work and earn your livelihood? You can't go and sell in the market to earn your roti? Would he say you can't go in the masjid to perform prayer? Would he do every single possible thing within the area of the epidemic to try to separate people from each other? Will you not think? No. Our prophet never said that you should reorganize your life in an area where the epidemic is taking place so that you have something called social distancing. No. Life goes on in the area where the epidemic is taking place. Life goes on. If I am wrong, tell me what is right. So you have no right to disrupt the economy. You have no right to disrupt people's livelihood. Yes, you have the right to impose quarantine so that people from this area are not allowed to leave. And you can enforce that with the armed forces, with the police. And you can prevent people from entering. Yes, you have the right to do that. That's quarantine. You do not have the right to block the masjid. You do not have the right to stop people from going to the masjid to pray. You do not have the right. I'm not speaking only to Pakistan now. I'm speaking to people around the world who have been brainwashed to accept the authority of a government to suspend prayer, to stop people from going to the masjid. From where did the government get this authority? I don't see amongst the Muslims. I don't see, I don't hear any voices challenging a government's authority. But yes, I see a Christian minister doing that. Yes, a Christian minister is doing that, but we are silent. Challenging the authority of a government to prevent people from going to the masjid to pray. Or worse than that, worse than that, imposing upon us. Would the Prophet allow you to do that? That you must stand up like monkeys in the masjid, like monkeys three feet apart? And as soon as you leave the masjid and you all go outside, you forget the three feet apart? Would the Prophet... Allah's blessing be upon him. Would he do that, that you are doing? On judgment day, you will have to answer for that. And we are warning you. Because we reject that. We reject it. If we are not allowed to perform the Salat, as it ought to be performed, we suspend the Salat. And when we sus suspend the Salat, you will have to answer on judgment day for that Salat that we have to suspend. This is uh, my comment. If the Prophet والسلام, was alive, how would he act? Answer, if he was alive and you are in an area in which the virus takes place, he would say, don't leave. Mm -hmm. And if you're outside, he said, don't enter. And he says, if you are inside and you die while not trying to leave, you become a martyr and you enter into heaven. And we have so many sheep and cattle and goats and camels now who don't want to go to heaven, no. No, 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 we want, to, we want to get the vaccine. We don't want to die. We don't want to go to heaven. That's a pathetic state of people who don't think. I don't trust people who manufacture a virus and wage biological war, so I won't trust their vaccine. But I don't think that Russia will do such a thing.
not Orthodox Christian Russia. So forget all those, that Jamaat about Putin this and Putin that and Assad this and Assad. Get lost. We trust Russia. Because Russia is returning to her Orthodox Christian heart. And the leaders of Russia today are the best leaders in the world. So tell that Jamaat, get lost. If I have, I'm forced to take a vaccine, I'd take the Russian one. The Chinese one, Chinese are businessmen, but Russia is Christian. And the Western vaccine, I don't trust it. So if you want to take the vaccine, that's up to you. But I won't take it. I don't need it. Life and death are in Allah's hands. And it is Allah who will, who will write when I will die, not a vaccine and not a virus. I have one more comment to make before I end. This is the longest statement I've made so far about the virus. Uh, but before I make that last statement, someone came to me here in Islamabad and he said to me, Sheikh, in my village there was a family who fell ill with the virus. And Sheikh, nobody wanted to go to help them. All the village, all the villagers shunned them. He said, my wife and I, we had to go. And we had to take care of them until they recovered. And we didn't fall ill. My, my response is, what a pathetic state of affairs. Where people now in Pakistan have become so totally brainwashed. That you would not go to your neighbor who has fallen ill. You're so scared of that, of death. We are a people who are not afraid to die. And yet today they're all afraid to die. But Russia is not like that. Orthodox Christian Russia was, af was not afraid to die. They were not afraid even of nuclear war when Putin entered into Syria to block the Zionists from taking over Syria through ISIS. Russia, Russia was not afraid to die, and we are afraid to die. What a pathetic state of affairs. But not those who have the Quran in their hearts, not that of Pakistan. The Pakistan which is faithful to the book of Allah would be a Pakistan which would not be afraid of death. Now, I have one last comment to make, and I hope the Zionists are listening to me. And when you hear this comment, you can take it and put it in your pipe and smoke it. You know, Russian <laughs> President Putin, he once said, he said those who are preparing poison for us to drink will one day drink their own poison. He says, those who are preparing poison for us to drink will one day drink their own poison. There are much truth in that words. Much truth in those words, because that is what's going to happen with this virus. This virus has come from the, from the Zionist laboratory. And this virus was created to try to facilitate Pax Judaica to replace Pax Americana so that Israel can become more easily the ruling state in the world without the obstruction of a hostile Arab population within Israel and around Israel. So using the virus as a biological weapon. But don't you know that Allah can also do it? <laughs> Ah, yes, I have to stop and laugh for a while. Have you forgotten that if you prepare poison for us to drink, that one day you can drink the same poison? Huh? Well, let me tell you what is the fate await awaiting you. Our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, described you as Gog and Magog. Yes. Because Gog and Magog are those who bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. 2,000 years after Allah had expelled them and blocked their return. 
And guess what's the fate of Gog and Magog? Yes, there is one part of the fate in which they'll be checkmated in the north, and that's coming in the big war. Karnain, the first Karn and the second Karn. But that's not our subject. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was time, that they would come down from the north and pass the Sea of Galilee on their way to Jerusalem. And by the time the last of them passed, before they, they're blocked, the last before they're blocked, they would say there used to be water here in the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee would be dry. So there'll be one part of Gog and Magog which will be blocked in the north, in the second Karn of Karnain. But the rest of Gog and Magog will be down in the south, in Jerusalem, around Jerusalem. And when Nabi Isa al-Islam returns, when the true Messiah returns, when Jesus, the son of Mary, returns, and you attack him, and he goes up a mountain in Jerusalem, do you know what's going to happen then? Let me tell you. He will pray to the Lord God. And the Lord God will send the virus. Let me speak slowly so it'll sink in. And the virus will attack you at the back of your neck, at the top of the spine. And when you are attacked by this virus, you won't be sneezing. You won't get fever. You won't have cough. No, you will be paralyzed. Totally paralyzed. But perhaps you can still move your eyes. Those who can think will, re will recall these words of mine and you'll understand what I'm talking about. I need to speak no more about that. You'll be totally paralyzed. That's the fate that's waiting you. The last few hours of your life will be lived imprisoned in your own body. And then by the next morning you're dead. And when you're dead, your bodies will begin to, to decompose and smell. So you prepare the poison for others to drink. And in the end, you had to drink your own poison. Your biological war is going to backfire on you. And you will become the victims of that biological war. And that's all I have to say to you. Goodbye.